kick game. Tigers lead. Is there a twist left? Atkins out of the middle. Mungles at the half forward. Chaos ball. Stangle. The full replay coming up on Fox Footy. I imagine one will watch it and one will not in the way that this is about to break. Jack Revolt, welcome. How are we, boys? Hi, Very Jack. well. And Tom Hawkins, uh, it's in the delivery zone, so not too far from home <laughs> at the moment. Tom, good to have you with us. Yeah, always nice. Sorry I couldn't be there in person, but uh, this is the next best thing. All right, we're going to get you to take us to it, but let's just deal with the news of the night first. Tom, uh, just your thoughts on Tom Stewart's four-week suspension? Yeah, look, um, first and foremost, it was a, it was a brutal uh, incident. Uh, I think four weeks is probably about right. Um, the thing that, um, you know, I, I reflect on uh, post-incident, because as players, we make mistakes uh, and we will continue to make mistakes, particularly in moments um, where you've got half a second or a second um, to, uh, to make a call. But... Uh, the thing that's in impressed me the most that's come out of it is the way that Tom Stewart's handled it. First and foremost, right from the word go, it's been about Dion and his health. And we, we hope that Dion's uh, is OK. Um, but um, it's uh, he's handled it well. It's not something that's going to define him. Um, but uh, I think four weeks probably sits about right. We're certainly going to miss him um, as a team. He's very important to us, but gives us uh, another player the opportunity to come in and, uh, and play a role. How is Dion, Jack? Uh, yeah, no, he's good. He's, up, he's been uh, back at the club. He's obviously been sent for scans on um, just facial, see if there's any facial injuries, which came back negative. And then um, I assume most guys have an MRI post that with a, with a, a fairly um, large concussion like that, a serious concussion. So, um, yeah, no, he seems to, be, um, seems to be going OK. Two questions. There's footage of you talking to Tom after the game. Yeah. What, how did that come about? Did you try and set the two of them up, did you? Funnily enough, Tom played in the uh, AFL, AFLX. With you? <laughs> yeah, when, uh, when the Rampage won a premiership. Uh, and, what were you um, saying to him here, mate? Oh, I just said, look, I understand. I, said, I didn't even know what had happened at this point. Like, yeah, uh, 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 like they booed him for the whole game and I didn't hadn't cotton on what actually happened because it was sort of out of the... No-one remonstrated because it was sort of... It was past the ball. No one sort of saw it. So I just went up to him and I'd figured out that something had happened with him. I said, it is what it is. No, he's, he's not a bad guy. I've, I've had a beers with him and I really like him. And unfortunately, he made a, he made a blunder and, and now he serves the, the consequences. He puts his hand up and says he's made a blue. And, uh, and he, does what he, uh, he does what a good person does. He owns it and, and moves on. We all, we all have our vantage point of, of what was going on. We've got this bloke who was... He, he, he was lifeless. Lifeless, yeah. That's a good that's So there, lifeless. We're looking, I'm, I'm thinking, what's, what's going on? What was it like on the field when the umpires were letting the game go on? You got trainers and doctors, and I'm thinking, what's, stop, what were you thinking? I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I was screaming at the umpires, and I think there's probably a few of us saying, stop the game, because it was clear that he was knocked out. Um, what were they saying back? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Play on, I think. That's what they were saying. So, I, yeah, I, I was a bit... I'm a bit flat about this. Like, I, I don't like the... I, like, no, not that... No, sorry, take the act out of it. But I'm a bit flat for the, the minute and a half to play after this where there was multiple times to stop the game. And Look at this! Got the ball, <laughs> likes to kick the ball over the top of him and the doctors. And, yeah, I, 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 did, I thought that could have been handled maybe a little bit better. A little bit better or a lot better? A lot better. better. <laughs> yeah. It just, it, it's the duty of care. Like, we, we, we speak about footy... It's probably the word is, of tonight is duty of care. They speak about um, duty of care with the incident and whatnot. But there's a duty of care post that. You've got three medical people looking over a player that's knocked out in the vicinity of the play in the protected zone. Could have nearly been 50 metres. He was in the protected zone and we continued to play the game. And I, I, the, from a safety point of view, I, I really didn't like that. Oh, it was ridiculous. Come and say it. It was absolutely ridiculous what happened there on the weekend. 
Yeah. So, I, and I think there was so multiple, agree with multiple, time, multiple times to stop the game, but... It was. You can say it. <laughs> Been a big rivalry in critical games. Is there any ill will in the aftermath from, from Between Richmond toward us? Geelong? No, I don't think right. so. I don't think so. I, I actually spoke to, to Tom via a message last night, and, and these are the games you play for. Like they, they, this, I think there's a bit of, um, I would say there's a bit of spice between the two clubs, just due to the fact that we've played them in prelim finals, we've obviously played them in, in grand final in 2020, and we've played them in big games like the weekend, and they're always close. And they're, both sides are littered with great players and that have had great histories and and have played in premierships for their, for their proud football clubs. These, these are the games that you go along and you, you want to become a player to play in. That's why we're lucky to play at two really big clubs. So take us to it, Tom, from your perspective. Uh, there was a little bit of an element of a recurring nightmare from a prelim in 19 and a grand final in 20 watching. Did you have that sense out on the ground? It's funny, uh, Jack uh, touched on the incident and it's the last I'll talk of it, but... Um, when you're out there in big games and big moments, it's it's really hard to um, to explain to to those that aren't out there what you're actually feeling in the moment. Like, yes, upon reflection, I knew that it was a big game. It was it was an epic contest. It had ebbs and flows. It had some wonderful footy. It was physical. It was fierce. Um, but at the time, you as a player, your responsibility is to stay in the moment. Now that sounds boring. But it, it is your responsibility of your team and your teammates because there's a huge amount of respect between both clubs. You've got millions of eyeballs watching you uh, on TV uh, or at the game. So it, it's a real privilege as an AFL player to play in big games. And, and there's a healthy um, uh, amount of respect, but a, but a rivalry, that's a nice mark. Yeah. Is there a group? Is there... <laughs> well done. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so, I mean, they, they're just, honestly, they're a privilege to play. It's a good, and is there, look, is there a lot and they more pressure? It, it, it could have gone, you know, a, a goal the other way um, and, and all of a sudden I'm sitting here as a loser. So, um, a, a, great, a great game to be a part of. It's funny, Tom, I was watching the game and it, was, it seemed, when you <laughs> kind of imagine what's the playoff, but the pressure, the pressure, yeah. and you had a shot for goal. And I said to myself, Tommy, you've got to kick this goal. <laughs> Be, be the champ that you are, and you miss. And I went, oh, <laughs> no. Doesn't need to you be know? reminded. No, it's not reminded. <laughs> this is footy. I'm not a big yeah. amateur, but this is footy. You, you've kicked an amazing amount of goals in big pressure yeah. moments, and you miss that one. Does that eat at you? Do you think, how long does it stay with you that you miss that goal, or are you old enough to say, right, mistake made, I've got to move on, and I'm in the next play? Yeah, certainly the latter. A mistake made and move on. But um, it's funny you, you bring up that um, set shot at goal because uh, post-training today, um, you know, I had 10 or 15 kicks from the exact same spot. So like anything that we um, as players, as as AFL players and uh, right across the industry, if we make mistakes, we, we try and work and rectify. Um, you can't put yourself in a, in a similar sort of position pressure-wise, but uh, you can fundamentally go through the routine uh, and continue to practice and, and then just um, bank on on your experience that you can execute in the big moment. So, yeah, it's disappointed, but, I mean, there's no point uh, harping on it. Uh, I didn't have my greatest game as an individual, but um, there were moments where uh, when you're not having a great game that you can uh, influence the game in, in small or other ways. So, um, You're all you right, know, Tom. I, you, no, you contributed. No. Nah, <laughs> Was the fifty You're minutes kind. of you like me? <laughs> was the fifty minutes of footy in the middle the best footy Richmond's played since its premierships? Uh, yeah, I think we played. Yeah, we played really well in that, in that middle part of the game. And, and it's funny because you come away from a game and um, and experience tells us as a football club to not look at the result in what you take away from a game. Now it sounds ridiculous because we were sixth on the ladder and now we find ourselves at ninth out out of the eight. But the amount of things that we can take from that game of football against one of the best sides in the competition, oh, nice. to know that it, it literally was a, a, a kick either way, like we could have won that game. But it, you can't let that affect the way you review it and you can't let that affect um, how you move forward from it as well. So we know we played some great footy. We just lost. And, and both sides can go out and play their best games of all time 
someone still has to lose the game, and that just happened to be us on the weekend. It was a fantastic game. I mean, I, I'll be watching it again tonight. Yeah. So the singular a... moments. So, Tom, yeah. you gave away one of the worst free kicks I've ever seen, mate. It's Tom, Jack Henry's got the game under control, and you've given away the free kick, and then you had one taken off you. So just take us each to these moments. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're the big moments I'm talking about. Like, if you, again, I, I didn't have my best night, but if you can minimise those bad moments, um, you can help contribute. But um, yeah, oh, clearly when you take a mark inside 450 and and, uh, and you've got the ball and you turn it over, um, it's uh, it's not a nice feeling, particularly when, I mean, it's okay for Jack handing it back. I'm sure he's a bit dirty on Tom, but um, certainly as the in the infringer, you feel very yes. guilty particularly when one of your key position counterparts <laughs> mark it. Great segue, John. Great segue. Were you filthy on Tommy Lins? Hey, I just like to commend myself with how I behaved after that. <laughs> <laughs> I've come a long way because five years ago, I might have piffed that back and spat the dummy. <laughs> Calm, cool, composed in, in the heat of the battle, but he's apologised so many times to me. I'm just like, who cares? It, 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 it is what it is. It, it was a, it, the umpire thought it was a free kick. Oh, I thought it was a good one. Oh, it's a it free is kick. What it is. Can I read this out, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, Nick Jack watched last night. What does he make of Robbo's take that they might be the best team in it despite the loss? Now, I, look, I, I think our football is as good as anyone's in the league. Our best football. I'm, I'm sure Tom would think that Geelong's football is the best football in in the league. There's this. And you've only got to look at the ladder, and, and obviously we fall from sixth to ninth, and sides rise up. That there's this. Just conglomerate of teams between 10, 12 to, to 1, that if you are off your game for 10 per cent for a, a quarter, a, a half a quarter, you're going to lose. And, and, and this is setting up for a fascinating. We had, the, we had the best round of footy we've had for a long time. That's awesome. Just even the top eight play each other and, and whatnot, but just the results and the tightness of it. But we, this is setting up for a really interesting back end of the season. I misread that actually. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to say, Jack watched last night, what does he think of Robbo's take that Tom Stewart should, should miss the next five match, four matches he plays against <laughs> oh, Richmond? Who's <laughs> done that? <laughs> no good. No, and you've lied there as well. I want you to tell everyone you just lied because I can read that and that's well, not what it says. No, I said that's what I thought it said. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, I didn't lie. Um, so what does it do to the belief of Great your theory, footy, yeah. Tom? Yeah, not too dissimilar to, um, to Jack. Um, you know, we, we had some periods, particularly early in the game, where we, we thought we played um, close enough to our best. Now, um, you've, talk, uh, you've heard us as a footy club talk uh, and the, the senior coach has led that um, in Scotty uh, about how we want to position ourselves for the back end of the year um, and, and get our... Uh, system um, going as, as well as it can be because I think ultimately, certainly in my time in footy, those sides that are, uh, are at their best uh, health-wise uh, are consistently being able to f perform week in, week out of, um, of being successful through the finals period. So, um, yeah, like Jack, we, we certainly think our best footy is going to be good enough, but um, there's a collective um, eight to ten teams that, that um, could easily say the same thing. So, uh, we take a lot of things out uh, of the game, some, certainly some RFIs that we worked on today, but um, all in all, uh, it, was, it was a good result for us. We've let the rascal lapse, mm. but James Sicily so gave a Bob, Bob quintessential be rascal, didn't he? Yeah. Just the ripping off of the headband. This yeah, is well, sort of where it happen. all begins. It was bound to happen, and I'm really proud of James Sicily because <laughs> someone had to do it. <laughs> and I, I love that Aaron Norton wears that too. Chatting to, to Mark Spontapelli when he's been in here, he says... Just marches to the beat of his own drum a little bit, Norton, which uh, I, I really enjoy. But typical forward, yes, no didn't surprises. Miss, didn't yeah. miss an opportunity, <laughs> and it does not surprise me that James Sicily was the first. Like, he got to do fined it. for he it. He did not. He Shut did. up. He, he got <laughs> fined. <laughs> Turn it up. He did. Are you serious? He's put his it? written submission in to beat it, which I hope he should have just written a hundred. How lines much did he get fined for doing that? A thousand dollars. You are kidding we me. Should laugh You're all more outraged by that than you were. The umpires let the game go on. <laughs> oh my god! A thousand bucks for doing that. Eh? That is theatre, isn't it? A thousand dollars. Yeah, we yeah. love that. I, I, I love that about <laughs> James Sisley. He's one of those players to play against. It's it's not much fun. You're bound um, to be on the end of some niggle. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can't I believe you got to find a thousand bucks for that. Stiff that he's a thousand bucks. 
You chipping Robbo for that? Just chip no. in five hundred or something. Just no. to help him out. Sure. I liked it. There's Come a bit on. of crowdfunding going on around Geelong today. So the community giving day, Tom, the, the 24-hour block, and, and the club's just hit the million-dollar mark with its with its donors, well its done. members, and its fans. Yeah, I just uh, got a message from the CEO saying we got to the 1.2, which is an incredible effort. Um, and as you mentioned, Jared, it funds our community programs and. We play an important part uh, as the Geelong Football Club in the community, as does every other football club right across Australia. Um, and it's important that we um, have a monetary base that we can f- facilitate and run these programs as well as we can. So a huge effort. Thank you, everyone that uh, donated. Um, that's right from the high-end club uh, sponsors right down to the supporters um, throughout Geelong and, and, uh, and the rest of uh, the country. So. It's fantastic for us. Um, it ensures that the program run for another three years successfully. So um, a great result for us today. Terrific, Tom. Great right to have on. you with us. Jack, nice uh, to see you in the studio. Just got a text message from the sports editor. Did you say ridiculous? <laughs> yeah, Rewald said it was ridiculous. That's the headline in tomorrow's <laughs> Jack Rewald and Tom Hawkins, to central to events on Saturday. Tweets? No, they're a little bit later on. Oh, oh, thanks, what? Straight <laughs> after 360. <laughs> the full game. You're kidding me, aren't you? <laughs> Best of 2022 here on Fox Footy. Relive every moment of it in full.